welcome back once again to this Tuesday edition. That's right, we're finally back on a Tuesday for the first time in a lot of weeks. But we're back since last Thursday, but we're back on a Tuesday, which is great. Welcome back to the Marami Podcast for another episode. Hope you're all keeping well out there, as always, as I always like to say. Yes, it's now Tuesday morning, sitting here with my morning coffee, just finished. My second cup of coffee. I'm looking out my window this morning and I see a beautiful blue sky, nice breeze, beautiful sunshine, and I'm looking forward to heading out into the big bad world later on today. But I hope you're all having a good day there, no matter where you're listening to me from. Whether you're local here in Northern Ireland or beyond, I hope you're all having a good day. I'm a little bit sluggish this morning, but I know for a doubt after I speak on this podcast today, it will get my day going. But yes, we're back. Hello. <laughs> And I was sitting there this morning and I was saying to myself, right, what am I going to talk about this morning? Am I going to tell more stories? Am I going to answer more questions? Well, obviously I want to answer more questions because quite a lot of questions come in over the last couple of days since the last time I spoke to you. Some interesting questions actually have been reading over the last few days on social media. Uh, what stories am I going to be talking about on the programme today? And there were so many things to look at and talk about. But again, it's some of the things that were in the news lately, it's the same sort of culprits. And I was thinking to myself, do I really want to talk about these friggin' morons again? But I've got some things I want to talk about. Some good news as well for the older listeners out there. I do have a lot of older listeners out there as well who like to listen to this podcast. But I have got some stuff to talk about and some interesting questions. How long this podcast is going to last today? I ain't got a clue. But... It's back on a Tuesday, and I'm glad to be here. But most important, let's get on to the business at hand. So before we go any further in this podcast today, i just like to get all the stuff out of the way like I always do every week, guys. Um, if you are a first-time listener here of the Murami Podcast, or if you're a regular listener and you'd like to get in touch with the show, you can certainly do it by the following methods, as I always like to read it every week. Uh, the main one being the website which has had a little bit of a work done too over the last couple of days. I've started up a new social media place where you can check out all our social media posts in one place. Order some merchandise, which some of our merchandise is actually due to arrive today. Uh, we've got a couple of new hoodies coming in the post today for Brooke. We've got some t-shirts for Lewis and I coming in the post today. But if you would like to get some uh, merchandise and check out all our vlogs and basically our Moor Army Hub, you can go to our website, which is moorarmy.co.uk. That's moorarmy.co.uk. I'm actually looking forward to our new t-shirts arriving today. I've ordered actually one of Lewis's t-shirts. If you're a regular viewer of the vlogs, you'll understand when you see me in this t-shirt in the vlog in the next few days. Uh, but yes, I want to go and check out all the stuff on there. It's moorarmy.co.uk. If you'd like to contact the show by email for any questions or suggestions or anything like that or for the program, you can contact us by email, first of all, which is moorarmypodcast at yahoo.com. Social media, which is the Facebook page, Moor Army YouTube channel on Facebook. Drop a like and I would appreciate it. Also on Instagram, which is official, Matthew Moor. I am on Reels, but you know something? I just checked my Reels last night. I haven't posted on Reels in four months. I just haven't got around to using Reels, to be quite honest. But I'm on there anyway. I'm not on Twitter or X, whatever the frick you want to call it. I'm not on that platform because that's just full of mentals. Straight to the point. Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it. It's full of Looney Tunes, and I will refuse to go back on that platform. But that's how you can get in touch with the program. But I'm here anyway to answer all your questions and hear your suggestions, which I always like to hear from. But, yes, that's how you can get in contact with us. I'm actually looking forward to getting our new merch today, ourselves. Brooke came in to me all day, and she was like, Dad, I want one of the Moor Army hoodies. And I was like, what? She says, one of your listeners or your viewers, or your podcast, whatever it is, or your vlogs, whatever, Daddy, have gotten in touch with me on Instagram, and they said you ordered a couple of your t-shirts and hoodies, and the hoodies apparently are dead comfy. Can you get me one? And I was like, okay. So it's on its way. It's a podcast hoodie she's wearing too. <laughs> well, she will be wearing. <laughs> and I got uh, Dad a t-shirt, Lewis a t-shirt, myself a t-shirt. A couple of t-shirts, actually. I got Lewis's one. Um, if you watch my vlogs, you'll see Lewis has this wee thing. He always says, Orba. It's like a Northern Ireland sound. Instead of saying or what, it's or what. And Lewis has kind of turned it into his wee catchphrase that he uses all the time now. And we've created a t-shirt. And it's available on the Moor Army store. Which is moorarmy.co.uk. But I'll be showing 
on the vlogs coming up soon. Um, but anyway, yes, it's Tuesday. What's my plans for today? I got a really busy day ahead of me today, guys. I got to leave here after getting this podcast put out. I've got a vlog to put out from Saturday. Um, where Lewis and I went to Derry, London Derry, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Lewis was at work with me on Saturday while he was watching the side men charity football game at the side of the pitch. So he was doing videos and photographs for football in the Irish League, plus he was watching the side men charity game. Um, but also we ch- travelled to London Derry as well, or Derry, whatever you want to call it as well. What a lot of shit's going on down there at the minute, isn't it? It's fucking crazy down there at the minute. Absolutely bonkers. Ratting in the streets. Two days before the game, we were actually told, well, I saw, I don't really watch the news that much now, as you all know, guys, but I just sort of was flicking through the channels. I think it was Thursday, was it, or Wednesday? I can't remember what day it was. And I was just flicking through the channels and stuff, and I came across uh, the news. Yeah, not BBC, by the way. Don't watch that crap, or ITV, or Sly News. Um, just flicking through the channels and it says that down in Derry, London Derry, whatever you want to call it, there have been ratting in the streets and there was like, was it 15 or 16 police officers injured? They were raiding houses, they were finding guns and World War II hand grenades. What the frick is going on? And I'm thinking to myself, like, what? We're, I, says to, I called Lewis downstairs and me, Lewis, we're going there on Saturday. Like, we're going down that neck of the woods. Are we going to be all right? And he was like, that I don't know. So we left it for a day or so, and then we heard more developments going on. And it came to the point now where it got to Friday mid-morning lunchtime, and I thought, screw that, I'm going to phone our secretary and, and chairman at the club to find out what the hell's going on. And they were like, yeah, it should be fine, it's not too far, it's nowhere near the ground where it's happening and stuff, and I'm thinking, here, I hope not, because I'm not taking my 14-year-old son down there to get caught up in a situation where the worst case scenario could happen and Lewis is stranded in the middle of that. Okay, I'm big enough and a man and I'm old enough to handle myself, but like Lewis is only a 14-year-old kid. But that was going through my mind thinking, holy shit, what the hell am I going to do here getting down to, to, to this game on Saturday? Should I just not go? Or And again, I made the big mistake. I mentioned it to, to the mum and dad on the phone and mum's panicking. She's like, oh my God, don't be good down there in case you get caught up with all that crap. And her old... 1970s living in the troubles mine kicked off and she automatically thought I was going to go down there and there's going to be a fucking civil war and there's going to be rats and everything else and I'm going to be going on okay but then it got to the point where it was like right okay what do we got to do here you know should I go should I not go what's the situation so I kept obviously I was contacting people from the club they were playing against and in case you're one of my football club I'm talking about and talking about uh, we obviously hard with welders who were with we were playing due to play Institute who were from that area but they don't have their own ground at the minute because their own ground was destroyed in a, in a storm and the whole big story um, go and look it up online you'll, you'll see yourself there's hundreds of videos and, and stories about it online they actually play at the Derry City Brandywell or the Brian McBride Brandywell Stadium as it's called now Um. so we were, had to go down there but after speaking to a few people and stuff, they were saying, like, no, Matthew, it's cool. It's nowhere near where we're going. It's just not, it's not, it's our side of the city, whatever. And I'm thinking, right, okay, we'll just see how it goes from there. So, we got ourselves up and we went to the, the, the match on Saturday. Everything seemed to be cool. There was never, there were no issues. The only problem I actually had was actually leaving the ground. We drove right in the middle of a, of, of a funeral, which was a bit of fucking shit, to be honest. Um, but we had to wait and obviously the funeral passed and then obviously get out no problem unfortunately we lost the game 2-1 which kind of sucked even more which made the, the trip even home even longer but it wasn't a bad day I must say it wasn't a bad day you know it was, it was a warm day we had, here's the thing guys there's certain places I go to in football throughout the year the likes of Derry, London Derry whatever and and a Skillen and Fermanagh and Castle Derg and all these different places I go to throughout the football season. And some of the views you see when you're out traveling. I mean, if you're a regular viewer of my vlogs, you understand that I do. I love to travel and love to find new places and stuff like that and whatever. You know, and some of the views that I see down there is just fucking incredible, man. 
really is such beautiful sights that I see in some of these places, some of these be small towns that I go through and places that we stop off and whatever else. And that's one of the benefits that I love of being in football. Just just love seeing all these be different towns and meeting new people and whatever else. And um, we got to go over the Glen Chain, a place called the Glen Chain Pass. This past weekend, it was a beautiful day. It was sunny. And, and then we went, went over to get over the Glen Chain Pass. It started to rain. And then we drove an R2 through three or three miles. And then the rain was gone. And it was, oh, it was just weird weather. But it was a good day. Apart from the result, of course. Like, But it was... Uh, it was just a bit concerning going down there after everything that I saw on the news. You know, and the thing is, I have said this multiple times in this podcast. I'm, I'm friends with, you know, police officers and people who work in different things like that. And I actually end up contacting one or two of them and just saying to them, you know, what the hell is going on here? Will we be okay down here? And they were like, oh, yeah, you'll be cool. Don't worry about it. But we were, but we're fine. You know, it's just a bit concerning when you start seeing all that type of crap on TV, you know what I mean? You know, because when I grew up in Belfast, that's all you ever saw on TV was, you know, bomb scar in this place, car bomb going off here, you know, shooting happening here, this per- this bar was shot at, people walked in here and shot gunfire off, there was rats in the street here, people fighting in the street with the police, you know, it's just, it's just one thing after another, after another, after another, after another. It's just the things that you see when you grow up during that time. But just when I start seeing all that crap, they were finding all this weird random stuff in people's houses. No, I'm going to myself, right? That's it. I'm not taking fucking Lewis down there. There's not a chance. Not that I expect it must have happened, to be honest with you, but you just got to be careful. You know what I mean? But we get down, we get in, we get out. Unfortunately, I got beaten. It's a bit crap, but what can you do about it? It's just one of those things. It's just pretty crap, but... It was a good day. We met a couple of people actually at the game who watch our vlogs and it was nice to meet them and that's another thing I love about the Irish League now, guys, because we're, me and Lewis are so well known as a, a father and son media team and obviously people watch our videos or our content on, online for the football teams and stuff like that, but they also watch our YouTube videos and we go to matches, we see people going to us all the time, you know, I watch your videos and we see your, we listen to your podcast, whatever, and I, and I love it. It's it's just so nice and so humbling to meet more people. You know what I mean? Even the most random places. I mean, Jesus, we were down for Manor there one Tuesday night. Gee whiz, donkeys ago towards the end of last season, and it was fucking freezing, and it was like minus two degrees. We went down that night, and we met people from from Anna who watch our videos. It was great, lovely people. But this is what I love about doing this podcast and doing the videos, and I've talked about this many a time. But anyway, the trip itself wasn't too bad. It was good. I enjoyed it. Unfortunately, we got beat. We had a good bit of crack. We came home on Saturday night, Lewis and I. Punctured. I came home on Saturday night and literally just threw the work bag down. Didn't even do the highlights for the TV. Done nothing. Just came in the door completely punctured. Starving hungry. And I thought, you know something? Screw it. I'm going to get dinner. And I'm going to switch off from the world tonight. And I'm going to have a bit of me time. Lewis ended up going upstairs and just crashing on his bed. Brooke was gone to Paul's house, her boyfriend. So we didn't see her day about half eleven that night. So we were just pretty much punctured. And it was stuffy heat too as well. It was crap. Really, really stuffy, stuffy heat. And here's the thing. We got on the friggin' train coming. We, we got the the coach, the team coach back to Belfast, which we always do. And then Lewis and I jump on a train to get home. And we were sitting on the platform and it was boiling. And this was at like 7 o'clock at night. It was so muggy. It was sticky. It was warm. I just wanted to get home and get a shower and get changed. And we got onto the train. And the train had its heating on. And I'm like, what? I knew the, the train guard who walked up and down collecting, checking the tickets and stuff. And I called him over to one side. And I was like, why for the love of God have you got the heating on? We go and ask the driver. A lot of people in the carriage we were in were like, oh my God. Do you know how bad it was, guys? Every single fucking stop we got to, I had enough getting up and pushing the button to open the bloody door because it was that warm. And people were like, this is ridiculous. Why have they got the heat on? You know, there's no rain. It's like 15 degrees outside. It's bo- It's muggy. It's sticky. It's, it's, oh, the heat was just like, a, sort of like, ugh. 
you know, they're like one of those nights when you're lying in bed and it's like too warm and you kick your quilt off and you're just lying there and you're just like sweating buckets and it's too warm. It, it kind of reminded me on that train of whenever I used to work on fucking home base. Guys, a long time ago, it was actually 10 years this year, and I used to work upstairs in the kitchen department. And whether it was like 25 degrees outside in the summertime, they had the heating on. And the uniform that we used to wear was like black, sort of like, what do you call those, like trousers with the pockets at the sides and all that there. Cargo type trousers with a black t-shirty thing that sucked, it just attracted heat. It was like a reflective type top and it just attracted heat. And there was no need for you to go to the gym back then. You would just stand upstairs for 20 minutes and you'd be sweating gowns. And I used to go down to the bosses all the time and say, for the love of Pete, turn the goddamn heating off. Seriously, it's too warm in here. And customers weren't even coming upstairs to that department because they knew it was too warm. Like people were taking steps upstairs and as soon as they were getting upstairs to walk on, the, the heat just hit them and they were like, nope, we're gone, too warm, see ya. You know, the heat was wild. And then during the winter time, the heating was fucking off and it was freezing. And for a long time, we used to bash on the, the management and stuff and say, here, listen, is there any chance you could turn the fucking heating off? Like, But that's what reminded me of that train on Saturday. It was just too damn warm. And so I'm just trying to scratch my shoulder here while I'm talking to you. <laughs> um, even Lewis was like, Dad, why are they heating on? I mean, you tell me. So we finally got off a, 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 a sweat box of a train and got home and just literally crashed. We were just completely done. It was too, it was too warm. It was far, 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 far. Far too freaking warm on that, uh, that day. But that was our Saturday. Um, I'm just glad we got down there and got in and out and got the job done. And, and unfortunately, we lost 2 1. It was kind of horrible, like two defeats in, in, in a week, which is crap. Um, moving away from that. What about Sleepy Joe Biden? Flip me, I was watching the stuff on him this morning again. Yesterday was 9 11, guys. And he was saying about being there the next day after all the attacks and all happened and all. And for what I was reading, apparently he wasn't there. The man's clearly going to see now. And then I watched the Norway recent speech of him where he was standing there going, oh, 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 he didn't even know where he was. Unbelievable. But yes, yesterday, guys, it was 9 11. I put a wee TikTok out on, on TikTok. By the way, guys, I forgot to say at the start of this podcast, I'm actually back on TikTok again. I've been posting more videos on TikTok. I posted one yesterday. Uh, wishing you all a happy Monday and stuff. And I talked about 9-11, which was yesterday. And our subject that uh, is very uh, heartbreaking to talk about. Because, obviously before it happened, I was always a big a big admirer of New York City. And, obviously, you know, the United States in general. And, that day, obviously, it was 20, what are we on, 22 years ago. And that was a day that I will never forget. Never, ever forget 9-11. Never. <coughs> Excuse me. And had happened, I'm not going to go too in-depth into it because obviously I've been ranting for over an hour now in this podcast. <laughs> You're getting extra today, guys. Plus, I've got the questions to answer. Um, no, 9-11 was one of those days where, at the time, I was working in a care home, working with the elderly and stuff and doing all the like, care for the elderly. And that was the job. Flip. I was what? 2001, I was what, 19, 20? And at that time, I was working night shifts in the car home. Um, the reason why I went on the night shifts was because Brooke and me, or Brooke's mum and dad, Brooke's mum, sorry, and Lewis's mum and myself, we were only kids and we broke up for a couple of months before we got back together again. We were just kids at the time, whatever else. And um, I went on the night shifts to try and avoid her because me and her worked in the same car home at the time. It was a whole kerfuffle. And I'll never forget it. I remember going home that morning on September the 11th, because at the time I was driving the motorbike, my 125 motorbike, I still love that baby, put my engine seized on it, God, I wish I still had that this day, it was a, oh, it was an incredible bike, so I remember going home, my routine was, if I was doing two or three nights in a row, I would go home from, what was he said, it was the first night of the second night, go straight home from work, into the shower, in the bed, sleep for eight or nine hours, get up, have an hour shower, get some food, put the TV on, Leave the house at about five ten past seven. Drive to work, get in, get changed into my uniform at work, get into the office for about ten to eight, and sit down, get settled, do the meeting at ten to eight, the handover as it was called, and then get onto this onto the floor for eight o'clock. 
or was it nine o'clock back then? I can't even remember. But anyway, that morning, that Tuesday, I was on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday that week. Or was it Sunday, Monday, Tuesday? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday that week. In fact, I was doing four nights that week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Because I was finally getting the weekend off. And I'll never forget it. I remember going home. And that, that, that Tuesday, for some reason, when I woke up, I went, I went to bed for about, I was in bed for about 9 a.m. So I went in the bed and slept till about 5 or half, quarter past, half past 5, whatever it was the latest. My routine was to get up, have a shower, get a bite to eat, watch a bit of TV in my bedroom, and then I was still living at home. So it was like, okay. But this one day, I didn't turn on the TV. And I remember it well. I remember getting up and going and getting a shower and getting food and sitting down. And I remember checking my old phone. And I remember how type of phone it was back then. It was, uh, what was my phone back then? I can't even remember. It was an old phone anyway. So there was no smartphones or nothing back then. I know, world without smartphones. Jesus, the younger wrestlers are going, what? No smartphones? What? And it was back then days like. But I remember getting up, mum and mum and or nobody else was in the house that day. And I remember going downstairs and getting another cup of tea and coming up and just sitting there. And I remember putting on uh, the radio for about two minutes and then I remember turning it off and getting ready. And part of me was like, this was about quarter to seven at night. I was thinking, I'm going to go to work early because I'm working with this girl, Diane, tonight, who me and her used to have such chemistry and work together. It was brilliant. In fact, one of her best friends is actually one of my neighbours now. So... And Diane's been, I've known Diane for me, what, 20 years now? And I remember going to work out, or I remember been working out at about 10 past quarter past seven. I'm walking straight through the front door, and there's Diane standing there. And she goes, Oh my God, did you hear what happened today? And I went, What are you talking about? And she lifted the Belfast Telegraph newspaper and just opened it out, and there was the photograph of the big, as the plane hit the building, the big red uh, thing of flames coming out of the, one of the towers and I, I looked at her and I, my, I swore to you guys there's no word of a lie my first words were what movie's that? and she goes movie? she says Matthew did you know what happened in New York today? and I went no she goes America was attacked today terrorist attacks multiple places and I went I die on dead on she goes, go into the small lounge and have a look. We used to have a wee small, tiny lounge. I walked in and turned the TV on, whatever it was. And there it was. Every channel, boom, 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 boom. Planes hit the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, the, the White House has been ev- evacuated, the towers collapsed and all. And I'm standing there looking at that going, holy shit. And I remember we're going to sit in the canteen now. I was going to have a cup of tea before we went into the, the, the handover thing in the, in the office. And I'm sitting there going, what the fuck has just happened? And she came in again. She goes, did you not see what happened? I went, no. Because normally I have a TV on before I come to work. And I, I didn't see it. And she was like, like nearly 3,000 people died in them towers today. And I'm going, are you fucking serious? So we then got the handover done. Done, got all the residents into their beds, whatever. And then we always get a break about half 10, 11 o'clock. Maybe half 11 at the latest. Where we can then get all different things done. Like we used to clean the... What do you call it? The dining room. We used to spray all the chairs down, clean them, and do all the different bits and pieces, do a bit of laundry and all. But I said to Diane, can we get that all done early tonight? Because I want to see the TV. I want to know what the hell's going on. So we plowed through everything by about near midnight. And the first round gets done at two, the second round gets done at six, and then the new staff comes in at eight o'clock in the morning. So at 12 o'clock, for about an hour solid, I sat in that small lounge watching that TV, and I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Guys, that was a day that sticks with me forever. And still to this day, you know, when Brooke and Lewis start growing up and start asking questions about it and stuff, and then as they get older, especially Brooke more days, and I see we still ask questions about it and stuff. And and you always hear different news stories all the time. You always hear, you know, you always learn new stuff about it. And that day just literally just, whoa. Unbelievable. I couldn't believe what I was watching in front of me. Couldn't believe it. I was shocked. So I couldn't. But, you know, I look back at it now and go, my good God. And still to this day, you think to yourself, why would somebody want to do that? All those innocent people, and I understand, obviously they had a motive behind it and 
And then you hear all the different conspiracy theories about it and all, and people say, like, you know, the American government was behind it. I have my view on it, but I'm not going to give my view on it on this podcast because I'm probably going to get some snowflake who's going to take offence to it and is going to going to report this podcast and try and get me shut down. I have my own view on it. It's, it's quite an, a, 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 an extreme view on it. I think, well, all I can say really is that... I think people knew it was going to happen. That's all I can say. But again, the way it happened and the tragedy of it all was horrendous. Not even just in New York, but like the Pentagon. I have my queries about that. Flight 93 and the crash in the field as well. No doubts about that. But you could talk about it all day. You know, what happened? Who was the blame? Did the government know? Was it an inside job? Was it terrorists? Was it this? Was it that? Who did this? Who did that? But again, it was just one of those days, guys, that will always stick in the memory for me personally and the rest of my life. And also for a little bit of something that will be replayed for decades to come. You know, those planes hitting the building, the building's collapse, and you know, everything else that happened all around that whole day. You know, and I went to New York in 2004. And when I went there, the ground was, it was just a big hole in the ground at the time, guys. And it was just an eerie feeling being there. I actually have footage on an old VHS tape. Where you see the hole in the ground. And all that. I actually wouldn't mind sharing that footage sometime on, on my YouTube channel. Just to what it was like back then. It was just a building. It wasn't even like a building. It was just like a big giant hole in the ground. And it was just being there that day. It was here. I was here. I lay flowers and stuff. Now they've got the new memorial there for 9 11. They've got the memorials everywhere else. Or all the other incidents happened as well. They've the big memorial fountains and all too as well. There's the new World One Trade Center now there. But it's just one of those things, guys. You know, obviously it's not part of this country and stuff like that. And But it's just, it affected different people in different ways. And I'll tell you a true story before I, I go on to the questions from you guys today. But. There was a guy that we used to know who used to live on our family street. And he worked for IBM Computers, for what I remember. IBM was it, I think it was he worked for. And he, I, because as soon as that happened, I thought of him. Because he worked in New York as part, you know, of all the different things. And the Trade Center was there and he, he doesn't work around that area. He worked in the towers and, you know, because I always remember as a kid, he used to, we used to play football at the top of the street. And we used to see him coming in his business suit. And one of my wee fellows used to live in the street. And I used to call him Mr. Businessman. And he used to tell us about when he used to go to Hong Kong and China and New York. And he, all these different things and all them big tall buildings in New York. And all I go in them and all that there. And I was thinking to him, oh shit, he's away too on business at the minute. I wonder if he's in those buildings. Is he dead or what's the crack? The day of the, the, the morning of 9-11, he was due to have a business meeting on the... I don't know what floor it was, 60 or 70th floor, somewhere in that, anyway. I think it was the South Tower, I think, maybe. I'm not honestly sure. But when he flew to New York from Belfast, he started feeling a bit sick. And he wasn't feeling great. So what he done was he got there two days early. And as the days went on, he started feeling a bit run down and flu type thing. So on the Monday afternoon, September the 10th, I ran into him a lot of years after and he was telling me this. On September the 10th, he phoned the offices to say that he was in his hotel in New York, but he still wasn't feeling great and he wasn't sure he was going to make it to the meeting on the Tuesday morning, which was due to take place at 9 a.m. in the South Tower. Okay? Do you know where I'm going with this, don't you? So he didn't go to that that morning. He woke up during the night. He was telling me he was he had the hot sweats. He was being sick. He had vomit and diarrhea. He wasn't feeling great. So he thought, right, I'm not going because I'm not going to take this 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 infection virus thing into and spread it all around the office. So everybody else was he getting sick with the flu or whatever. So he phoned in sick at I think he said it was about six a.m. or something in the morning. He phoned in and he said he wasn't going to come in, but he was going to try and get in the, the next day or the day after. And he apologized for it and stuff, and everything was cool. And what happened the next day? The Twin Towers were attacked by the planes and the planes brought the buildings down and he could have been there, but he wasn't. He was sick. So 
it was a bit of a, a blessing in disguise for him. But he lost a lot of work colleagues that day. They were all killed. Some got out, some didn't. But again, it's just things like that that puts it into perspective for you what exactly happened that day in September 11th, 2001. And I look back at that with a lot of heartache and memories. And, you know, as I said in my TikTok yesterday, guys, on my TikTok account, I said, you know, spur a moment of thought for the people that day. And I always do. Never, ever forgotten. You know, I mean, it was just a... It was a hard thing to watch, watching all those people jump out of those buildings. I mean, you think about it, you're in that situation where you're standing in that building that's on fire and you've no way of getting out of that building. Would you rather burn alive or would you rather jump out the window? You know, what, what, that, that type of situation you would be in, what would you do? Like seriously, what would you do in that situation? It's a tough one that people would say, oh, I would just jump and be all over in two seconds or whatever, but... You, you just don't know. You know what I mean? Um, it's just one of those days I'll never forget. And yesterday marked the 22nd anniversary of it. And it's just hard to believe it was 22 years ago. I, mean, I remember like it was yesterday. So I do. I really, really do. But guys, I want to move away from that there now. I want to get into some of the questions that you sent me today. Um, I know I've been ranting on quite a bit today on the podcast, but... I just wanted to bring up a couple of wee subjects that uh, it was obviously a lot of these guys asked me to hear more stories from me and and whatnot. So I've been running on quite a bit today, so I do apologise for that. <laughs> but anyway, I've got some questions here which I'm going to go through on Facebook, Instagram and the emails. So I'll do Facebook first of all because somebody's been getting in contact with me, even had my own cousin on me as well. Which I had to read at the question this morning to Lewis because it was a question for Lewis. Um, because I put a thing out last night saying, you know, any questions and stuff like that, their contact us. Uh, my cousin who was in London the other week as well, uh, for the wrestling show in London, we went and seen as well. He was one of the ones stranded as well. Talked about him on the podcast a few weeks ago, my cousin James. So, James, hello. Hope you're doing well out there, uh, cuz. And uh, he started up We Think Guys on. TikTok called uh, Food Guru NI. He's doing a bit of food reviewing, so he is. You want to go and check him out on TikTok and all the other social media platforms. Food Guru Northern Ireland NI. Um, he put a wee thing out yesterday about doing a review on sausage rolls. Now, I know you all know out there, guys, that Lewis is obsessed with sausage rolls, Pound Bakery. But he wrote yesterday, said, I went out in the search yesterday uh, for Ard's best sausage roll. I'm going to be doing it again, Banger Donnie D, and then the Belfast as well. My question is, What's Lewis's top three sausage roll shops? Well, you can't mention Greg's because he doesn't like he he prefers Pound Bakery, but that's in England. Um, over here, there's a wee bakery on the Newton Arge Road, not too far away from the Welder Social Club. Can't remember the name of it. It's a wee bakery. I must actually try and get the name of it for you. They do awesome sausage rolls. Awesome sausage rolls. And I'm trying to think of another one that he actually um agree or sorry loves as well sausage rolls for Lewis I'm trying to think where else he would normally eat sausage rolls from because he had one there recently I think it was in England to be honest with you James um over here the wee the wee uh central bakery and banger is pretty good too as well but they're obviously I think they're closed now uh oh what do you call that place I can't remember the name of it now they do sausage rolls as well, but it's not like a bakery. I think it's just like a, like a garage type thing. They do good sausage rolls. But the wee one in Belfast on the Newton Arge Road, I must get the name of it for him and I'll send it to you in a message. It's like a wee bakery and it does homemade sausage rolls and they are incredible. So they are. There's a few wee spots in town in Belfast as well, which I've ran into over the years as well. But I'll definitely get you the name of that one, James, and I'll send it back to you on Facebook. But thank you for the message because uh, I do appreciate it. And I hope your wee page does well for the food guru as well. Um, one here from our usual listener as well, Sharon, is it Sharon Murray or Murphy, um, sent me a message on Facebook as well saying, Hi Matt, just wondering if you have an interest in Formula 1. My son Aaron is a big Formula 1 fan and took him to the British Grand Prix at Silverstone for his 21st birthday. 
Just wondering what your thoughts are on this. Am I a big Formula 1 fan? I'm not actually, Sharon, to be quite honest. I'm not a big Formula 1 fan. I would watch it now and again. My dad would watch it more than I would. Now, in saying that, there, my ex-wife used to watch it quite a lot with her dad. Um, but I'm not really a big, massive fan of it. Only really link that I would have the Formula 1s playing the old Formula 1 games back in the day when I was younger in the computer games. Um, I'm not a massive fan of it. I have a few friends who are big, big into it. And all, and, uh, I have a cousin who went to the Formula 1 in one of them forums, I think it was Saudi Arabia or something he went to it, or I don't know where he went to it at the time with his wife. I remember him telling me he went to the Formula 1 years ago. Um, but oh, honestly, I'm not a, a massive fan of Formula 1, to be quite honest with you. But, again, I know people who are, who are very passionate about it. I know another guy I've known for years as well, um, Craig, a friend of mine, Craig, he's crazy about Formula 1, he always has been. Um, but to be honest, I mean, I'm not a massive fan of it, to be quite honest. But I'm sure your son had a great 21st birthday going to see Formula 1 at Silverstone. I'm sure that was an experience for him. So it was, but uh, yeah, thanks for your message. Let's get into some of the inbox messages here on the Facebook as well. R- right, excuse me, I'm full of wind here this morning from my coffee. Um, let's have a look here. One here from Tom. Tom has sent me a message. Uh, Tom, Tom Moore? <laughs> Same as myself. Hello, Tom, fellow named t- namesake Moore. Tom, no relation. <laughs> Tom says, Hi, Matt. How you doing? Love listening to your podcast every week. Lovely hearing all your stories and all your thoughts and views and all the different things going on in the world. I've recently seen all this hysteria coming back, especially starting in the United States and Australia of all this COVID stuff coming back. What is your view on this? I don't want to say too much as we don't want to get cancelled by the cancel culture. Well, that's true. Um, I'll watch what you say now because they might uh, report you. So scared. Uh, what's your th- view on this here? Do you think it'll come back in the UK? If so, w- the most important question is, will you comply? Well, Tom, I think I've said this before in the podcast. The next time it happens, if they try and bring back restrictions and all, am I going to comply? Hell no. Take a lot of people in this country going to comply? Hell no. I've seen some of the news reports popping up online on TikTok and Instagram videos and all by people saying that they're trying to bring, well, some of the places have brought back mask mandates. Sleepy Joe was wearing a mask the other day when he was with his, because his, was it his first lady or something, tested positive and even though he tested negative, he's wearing a mask and I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. Honestly, do you really think we're going to fall back into that situation again where they bring in restrictions and have a secure outside shops like sheep? Going to the slaughter? Hell no. That's just answering your question, Tom. I'm not. Rep- I'm not complying to it. Never. No chance. Not a mission. Not a million chance. Even my mum and dad, who were the most scared ones out of them all, mum was completely shit scared. They even went the door at one point. I even said to mum about it two weeks ago. Mum, she says, "Ah, where they go? They can take a run and jump." If you asked my mum that three years ago, she'd have been like, oh my god, no, there's north 50 cases, oh my god, I'm so scared. Nah, she's like, hell no, I ain't complaining to that crap, all the lies they told us, no, nah. But thanks for your question, Tom, I do appreciate it. Um, if you want to follow us on Facebook, guys, it's Moor Army YouTube channel on Facebook, and you can drop us a DM on there for any of the podcasts coming up in the future. Um, let's get into the Instagram here now, let's have a wee Jeffy Duke through the Instagram, I'm prepared today guys, i got the laptop and all here going, I'm prepared today, I'm sure you probably hear the clicking going on here in the black iron. Uh let's have a look here and see, right, of one here from, let's have a look here and see, oh, gee whiz, there's so many emails from you, right, one here, gee whiz, Eileen, 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 sorry I can't even speak today, Eileen on the, on the email, which is Murami Podcast, yahoo.com has wrote me an email today saying hi matthew how you doing love listening to your podcast every single week hope this email gets read out on your podcast because myself and my sister are two massive fans of your program just wanted to see if you could give us a wee shout out for my sister's hairdressers in swindon oh swindon Hmm, never been to swindon before every time i think of swindon i always think of swindon football club in the premier league in the first season that's why I always think about Swindon. Probably think I'm stupid like, but that's just my football brain. Um RB business or sorry, Herbie Business has been going for over twenty years. Just want to see if we can give a wee shout out to her and her business. We love listening to your podcast every single week. 
we always sit and talk about it over a cuppa <laughs> over the weekend. Wonder what your stuff you're going to rant and rave about next. By the way, my sister is called Stephanie. <laughs> okay, Eileen. Well, hello, Stephanie. You talk about me over a cuppa? You mad? But yes, you got to be placed in Swindon there. Never been to Swindon before in my life. Never been there before. But as I said, yeah, it's my football brain. I think of certain places in football. Football memories just popped into my brain. Swindon Town in the Premier League back in the day. Good God, it was a long time ago. But yes, thank you ladies for the message. I appreciate it. Hope you're all keeping well. And uh, you're doing your wee hairdressers in 20 years in Swindon. If you're ever in Swindon, I might call by. Send me an email with the name of it. And if I'm ever in Swindon on my travels with Lewis, we'll nip her head through the door and say, Hola. You can give me a short back and sides. Even though I've got no hair. And we give Lewis more of a short back and sides. You give me one like he has her. <laughs> Thanks for the mail, girls. I appreciate it. Right, let's get into another one here. Let's have a look. Right, one here from Colin. Colin Burley. Is it Burley? B U R L E Y? Burnley or Burley? Burley? Colin Burley, who is from London, says, Hi, Matt. How you doing? Just wanted to let you know I attended uh, all in at Wembley Stadium myself with my partner and my two kids. We were looking out to see if we could see you, but then after watching your vlog and seeing all your stuff on social media, we've seen the fact that you had. Upgraded your seat to the floor. And then he puts in brackets here. Lucky git. <laughs> okay. Hope you've had a great time. Love watching Lewis's reaction on your social media feeds. Most importantly, I love watching Lewis's reaction as he was scissoring people outside with his foam hand as you were leaving Wembley Stadium. We all had a great time ourselves even though we were in the nosebleed section, but I'm sure it was some experience being down at ringside at the event itself. We love listening to your podcast and the kids love your YouTube videos. Keep up the good work. We hope that one day maybe run into you. And that comes from Colin in London. Okay, Colin. Well, thank you very much for the message again. Uh, appreciate it. But yes, we uh, upgrade our seats. Guys, go and check out the vlog. It's available on the channel. Um, where we are... What the night? Sorry, just to talk about the channel. I'm sorry that, that change the subject for just a wee second there. Colin, on your email. I'm part of this page at the minute on Facebook, which is to do with YouTubers. And there's some YouTubers on there with like 200,000 subscribers and 100,000 subscribers and all that there and loads of followers and all. And the, there's a guy I actually posted the other day, he made a good point. People's YouTube videos, the views are going through the floor. Even myself, I've noticed. And a lot of people contact me all the time saying they don't get to see my videos till like two or three weeks later after they've been posted. Because people are not being notified. And people are not able to find the videos. People's views are down through the floor. Like, what is going on with these YouTube videos? I haven't got a clue. Really don't know. Just thought I'd bring that up. All right, Colin, thanks for your message. Yes, we had a great time. Lewis and I, it was fun. So it was. But it was an experience that I'll always remember with Lewis because Lewis got to see the acclaimed up close. And also, Anthony Bones shared Lewis's stories on his Instagram multiple times. And he also saw Lewis's sign and he was over the moon. And he also mailed Lewis back as well on Instagram. So he was over the moon. <laughs> Anything keeps them happy. As long as it keeps them from going to my ear, I'm happy enough. I'm only joking. But anyway, let's, the, <laughs> let's go on to the next one. Uh, right, let's have another scroll here through the emails. Right, I have one here from Rupert. Rupert Justin, who is from Hull. Rupert Justin. Okay. Hello, Rupert. Uh, how are you? He writes here saying... Hey Matthew, just wanted to give you a quick message to say a heads up on your podcast that I actually enjoy listening to you every single week. Every week there's no episodes of the podcast, I get a little bit disappointed because I love hearing you rant and rave, especially about the royal family as I think they're all complete twats. Okay, <laughs> straight to the point. Uh, also been following your YouTube channel for the last year or two. I've noticed you haven't been posting as many videos on your YouTube channels but you've normally been doing and I just wanted to see is why is this the case. I probably understand why it's because you're probably working and obviously having two teenage kids. I have all the respect in the world for you as you bring up your kids on your own for the last lot of years. Keep up the good work, my friend, and hopefully one day I get to meet you in person. Love the podcasts. They're added to my favourites on Spotify and Apple Music. Well, thank you very much, Rupert. I appreciate it. Yes, that's the reason why. Work, kids, everything. Nightmare, jobs, drive you mad. Joys of kids. <laughs> but listen to Rupert thanks for the message I appreciate it, it means a lot as always, it means so much to everything you do and obviously you pushing that play button every week 
supports the Mirror Army, Mirror Army sort of family, and I do appreciate it every single time. So thanks very much. I do appreciate it. Right, let's get into one more here, one more email before I go on to the Instagram. That'll be fun. Right, one here from Sean. So let's hear it from Sean. Sean writes, Hi Matthew, Sean here from Letterkenny. Okay, down south. Just wanted to write you a wee message to ask you a question. Why are you so negative towards the mainstream media, especially the BBC, ITV and Sky News? I've noticed in your last recent podcast you call them Sly News, BBC and Woke ITV. Why is this the case? I'm just asking. I too do not agree with a lot of the stuff that they put out. But you seem to have a, a motivation against them. I just thought I would ask the question, not being negative or trying to be a troll. Just wanted to ask you this question and why. And that's Sean from Leather Kelly. Well, Sean, I will answer your question. The reason why I'm so against the BBC now is because of all the corrupt bullshit lies they put out. All the cover-ups that they've put out. For example, the Martin Bashir incidents, the Jimmy Savile incidents. All that crap that they sped out to us over the years. The way they try and force old age pensioners to pay a TV license which they shouldn't pay. Making people pay for a TV license that I think is complete nonsense because there's bugger all on their TV channels. All the shite and crap that they spit out to us during COVID. All the fear mongering. All the crap that they lie to us about. All the stuff that they feed out to us every single day which is so one sided it's unbelievable. With ITV it's exactly the same. All their woke be kind bullshit that they put out every time whenever they've more faces than the Albert clock in Belfast. The crap that they covered up for Philip Schofield, most importantly recently. With Sky as well, all their mentalities and all their sort of wokeness and driving stuff towards against trying to all the lies they spell out during COVID as well. My eyes were really open towards them people, especially during that time with all the crap that they were feeding us on a daily basis. Constant skirmongering, always lying to us as well. So that's part, that's probably just a wee tip of the iceberg of why I'm not so against them. And I'm not, you know, just like saying every day of my life, oh, I ever think about being negative towards them and all that there. But just most of the mainstream media now is just exactly the same. And the way I pisses me off as well as Sean is because if you speak the truth and you speak up and you you, you you know you stand up for yourself nine times out of ten they will literally go through you and they'll cancel you and you can't speak up against anything anymore that the mainstream media does because if they do they'll try everything in their power to get ready and they have a following who do the same because I still get people all the time saying we should be getting you cancelled for what you said. I mean, look at that moron months ago that I had. And I read out his emails in the podcast saying that he was going to con- contact every place that I ever vlog in because I am not P. I, he's too politically correct. And because everything I say and do, like he was going to contact Liverpool Football Club, Tesco, all the shops that I ever filmed in, all the places I've ever filmed in, all the councils and all, he was going to con- contact to get me stopped from filming. Clearly, this guy lives on planet fucking loopy. But that's the reason why. Because of all the propaganda and all the bullshit that they feed it, that's why I don't watch the news anymore. So I don't. So uh, that's the reason why, Sean. And I'm just being totally honest with you. But anyway, thanks for your message. And I hope Leather Kenny is doing well down there at the minute. I've never been to Leather Kenny. So hope you're having a good day, Sean. And thank you very much for your message. I appreciate it. Right. Instagram before rock and roll and head into. I can't believe I've been recording so long today on this podcast. So I can't, I can't believe it. Right, let's get into the Instagram. So let's have a look. Do, 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 do. Right. Oh, here's one here from Kim on Instagram. Hi, Matthew. Hi, are you? I hope this message finds you well. It has. I'm reading it out to you. <laughs> Kim goes on here to say, Matthew, you've mentioned a few weeks ago about state pensions for elderly. I just wanted to hear your thoughts on this. A story came out yesterday saying that apparently the state pension is going to be rising, which I'm glad to see. My mum and dad, who are both struggling to pay the bills and keep the heat on, which I've had to help them so many times recently, we've heard now there will be an inflation coming up for pensioners up to 8.5% next April. I'm so glad to see this. It works out about an extra £13 a week. Not that that's going to make much of a difference, but what's your thoughts on this with your parents being right about the 60 years of age mark as well? Can I ask you for your views on this? Of course you can, Kim. Of course you can. Pensioners at the minute, apparently, I was reading this actually this morning, funny enough, you mentioned it. Um, they are due to get a 8.5% uh, 
uh, rise in their pensions next April, which works at about 13 quid a week, 14 quid a week, which is not going to freaking do very much now, especially with the cost of gas and everything else. Um, state pensions is a nightmare. Like, I worked it out for mum and dad there a few months ago. I don't think dad's going to get his for another couple of years. And mum will not get her until she's about 67, 68, which is fucking ridiculous, like. Um, they're trying to put the working age and all up too as well now, which is, pff, baffles me. Um, people, the reason I was reading this story this morning, it was saying it's because of the cost of living latest, um, having been so expensive. They are set, obviously set for a significant rise. Um, but then again, whether this is going to happen or not, you don't know. Kim, honestly, I really don't know. I, I do hope that the pensioners do get more money out there and get more help with their heating and all too as well because the cost of heating is fucking atrocious now. So what is the cost of living now is just baffling. And I, listen, I hate to bring up COVID again, but I'm just going to state the fact. When this all this crap started, I remember we're all at home and people were out doing their gardens all the time instead of being out working and being at home and all that there. And I remember turning around to mum and dad and saying one time on a video call. And then a few months later, my mum finally left the house after all the COVID crap and she was just sitting in our garden at the time away from us. And I says, mum, do you realise that everything that you see right now, like food and, and gas and electric and all that, it's all going to go up in price. How do you think the government's going to make their money back from all the money and all the furrow they're paying and all the businesses they're paying and all... How do you think they're going to make their money back? Things are going to go up in price. Like food, electric, gas, everything you can think of is going to go up. Rates, tax, everything's going to go up because they're going to make their money back. And it's happened. The co- look at the, po- the price of diesel and petrol. And I've talked about this before in the podcast many times. Even at the time I went out and done all those interviews with people. And I was asked at the last minute not to make it public because of the whole circumstances, which is crap. And I still wish this day I could play those interviews for you because some of them were like heartbreaking. Especially that elderly couple I spoke to outside Marks and Spencers. Um, but yeah, you know, Kim, I completely understand. It's just, it's crazy. And I hope, especially the older generation, need to be looked after. You know, because they've worked all their fucking life. they paid all their taxes. And they're left nerds, but then you see these fucking morons coming off the boats and they're getting everything fucking handed to them. I, used to, I, I was talking to a guy... Over the weekend, there who lives in Bangor, I was speaking to him at the shopping centre. He worked down near the seafront where that hotel in Bangor is here, where all them ones are being brought in off the boats. They're still bringing more in, and they're all running around the best of clothes, the best of gear, like eighty pound trainers and iPhones and everything out there. And there's people out there who can't even afford to fucking have a decent phone or a good pair of trainers on their feet, and they're working full time. And he was telling me, he's like Matthew, you see some of the clothes they're running around in, and they're running with all their smartphones and online going. This is where our government's messed up. So it is. But thanks for your message, Kim. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I would keep a close eye on that story about the uh, the pension going up 8.5%. The sale average is between 13 and 15 pounds a week more, which will probably heat your house for about two, about two hours. The way prices are now, this is just fucking crazy. So it is. But thanks for your message. I appreciate it. Let's go on the normal here from Instagram. Let's have a look here and see. Right, I've one here from Mark. Mark is from Mark from Merseyside. Oh, hello, Mark from Merseyside. Just checked your Instagram. Mark says you're from Merseyside. Hey, Matthew, how you doing? I just wanted to drop you a wee Instagram message. I actually saw you in Liverpool a few weeks ago in the shop that I actually work in. Well, cool. Oh, do I have a stalker? <laughs> I'm kidding. I just wanted to come over and say hello to you, but it, you looked like you were on a bit of a mission. You weren't in the shop very, very long, but you were in and out and gone. I wanted to ask you about your views of us because we are all on high alert at the minute as we are on the verge of possibly losing our jobs. And I know you were talking about Wilco on your podcast a few weeks ago when I came across your YouTube channel a few years ago during your Liverpool videos and obviously all your trips to Liverpool. I currently live just outside the city and I've been working in Wilco for five years now. I'm of the older generation coming in towards my 60s, but I've been working here and I've been so happy working here since retiring from my other job after 35 years. I saw you in the shop. I wanted to approach you, but I didn't know why and how to approach you at all. But hopefully next time you're in Wilco, please stop by and say hello. But I just wanted to ask you for your views on the situation of us about to lose our jobs. Okay. 
Well, I'll be totally honest with you. Yes, I was in the shop for like two minutes because there was a big massive clearance sale. And if, if I was in your situation, I would be shitting my pants too as well because my kids love Wilco. Like my kids have bought like Lego sets out of Wilco. We've bought stuff out of that Wilco in Liverpool. It was actually, where was the Wilco we went into? St. John's. Yes. So you, you saw me. You should have come up and said hello. I, I would have been great to meet you and have a chat with you. So what if could I have a wee interview for you for the podcast? <laughs> but uh, no, yeah, I was in the Wilco store. Was it last week? The week before? I can't remember. I walked down briefly and seen all the stuff for a second. But then I was thinking to myself, because I actually remember walking over towards the makeup section and all and seeing all the stuff and going, I could bring that home for Britain. And I'm thinking, nah, the flight probably won't let me through. But to be honest with you, I, I, I would be in your situation where I would be worried about your job. And it's a bit worrying as well at the minute because I see all these things going on at the minute. Saying, uh, I actually read it yesterday. That there was 24 sto- stores closing today. Now, I don't know which stores they were. Um, but again, pfft, it's a flipping nightmare. Like, but you know something, why I'm talking to you here, I'm actually trying to dig this up here, why I'm talking to you now to see where the stores are actually closing for Wilco. And it's so sad because I heard the other day as well that apparently, was it Asda was banning it over for what I was reading? Um, but I don't know why it's going to go through or not. I don't know. Oh, there we go. Just searched up there. Let me have a look here and see. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, there's it there. The list of stores that are closing today are, is it Acton and London, Aldershot, Barking, Bishop, Brown Hills, Cambridge, or uh, Cambury or something it's called, Cardiff Bay, uh, Irving, Liverpool, Edge Lane. I don't think that's the one in Liverpool or Liverpool uh, St John's. There's quite a few here. The likes of Staffordshire, uh, Wakefield, Western Supermare, uh, Winsford, Tunbridge. Oh, fucking hell, there's so many going. It says here in the thing, uh, Wilco been shut its doors for good on Tuesday as high street re- retailers prepare to close down. Stores across the country as far as part as Aldershot and Stanford amongst the 24 branches to shut in an hour 24 or an hour 28 to close season trading Thursday. Wow. So, I mean, I'm, I'm reading this and I'm going to check here when he sent this message to me here. Last Saturday. So by then, I don't even know why his, his store will be closing on Thursday or not, but so sad. It really is so sad to see any business going on. And this is what we've all seen since COVID. All these stores are shutting. Financially crippled and screwed. And not even just because that there, obviously, because of COVID. No, it's because the whole way the world is now being so bloody expensive. It's the same in my town where I live now. The main street of Bangor where I live 20 years ago was a... Th- but 25 years ago was thriving. When you used to go in that town on thir- Wednesday, Thursday, Friday nights... All the shops were lit up. You had like Woolworths and Wellworths and all these are big shops. You had shoe stores. You had clothing stores. Everything was all lit up. And now, because the council's so fucking greedy for for rent and, and for everything else, it's just coffee shops and charity shops. There's nothing down there anymore. They've all moved away and went to different places like supermarkets and all because it's cheaper rent. It's crazy. But listen, thanks for your message. And I hope... Well, I hope they don't. well, for what I've seen in that story the other day, it looks like they were going to close down. But if you if you are maybe redundant, I hope you get yourself sorted for a job. Um, I will be in Liverpool again at the end of the month, so I'll try and pop in to the store and see if it's still there. If you're about, come up and say hello to me. We'll get a picture together. We'll have a chat. If you want to send anything for the podcast, you can do it. If you want, I can get a recording off you or whatever. But it's so so sad about Wilco. Really, really is so, 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 so sad about Wilco. My kids used to love going in there too all the time because they bought wee Lego sets and all from there and different wee things over the years and it's just, oh, so, so, so sad. So it is. But thanks for your email. I do appreciate it. Guys, I'm going to rock and roll here and head to the I was actually recording here for an hour and 50 minutes today. It's fucking good. I think it's the longest podcast I've ever done. But thank you for all your messages. I'll get back to you as much as I can. Uh over the next day or two I'm back on Thursday for an hour podcast we'll be talking about our things on the show as well we'll also be doing the Jackass of the Week for the week so the, any suggestions for Jackass of the Week uh, get back to me uh, send me a suggestion by the social media feeds and the email address 
and we'll read out the Jackass of the Week. I've got a couple penciled down as well, but let me know what you think for Jackass of the Week. This piece will be on Thursday. Stay tuned for more vlogs coming up on the channel over the next couple of days. I'm going to be dropping another one today. So I am because um, I've got one dropping from the weekend there where Lewis and I were there. Lewis was watching the Side Men charity football game from West Ham's ground, pitch side of the Irish League game. And you see us in uh, Derry, London, Derry, whatever you want to call it as well. Some beautiful sights travelling down there too. So stay tuned for that vlog coming up on the channel. And we'll obviously be recording other vlogs throughout the week as well because we've got a lot of things going on here in the Moor House at the minute. Gee, gee whiz, we're actually in the middle of doing some renovation work at the minute, believe it or not. Um, Brooke and Lewis and my rooms are all getting emptied. I've actually got a skip coming tomorrow to the house, so we're getting a lot of house clearance done, so we'll be doing some vlogging for that. Where we're getting rid of uh, bedroom furniture, we're getting rid of stuff that we don't need no more, we're clearing out rooms, we're, Brooke and Lewis are getting their room decorated, uh, the different ways, obviously new furniture and new decoration and all in the room. I'm getting new floors put in my room. I'm getting one of my walls papered and getting everything all touched up with paint and all. So we've got some interesting videos coming in the next few days. So stay tuned for that. I've also got videos that are recorded. And I know a lot of you have been asking for this London video from London from the start of July. And I keep forgetting to put it out. I've got it edited on my laptop. I just keep forgetting to fucking upload the thing. Um, I've also got videos uh, from... I'm trying to think. What else videos have I got? I haven't even dropped yet. Oh yeah, the day I got my GoPro camera i recorded a wee video for that me and lewis brown our apartment in liverpool that was fun also got a wee bit of footage from a recent trip to the mot center with dad i haven't dropped that out yet either i'll be getting dropped in the channel too as well so we got quite a lot of few wee bits and bobs that i haven't put out yet which will be dropping on the channel this week sometime at some point but i'm back on thursday for another podcast guys so thank you very much if you're listening to this podcast on youtube don't forget to hit subscribe as well guys would appreciate it if you're listening to us on TuneIn radio spotify apple music wherever you're listening to us online Please, as to your favourites, I would appreciate it. I'm going to go now and get this edited, put the gear, get it out and get ready to start my day because i got to go to Belfast today. Oh my God, the joys. Right, so we'll see you back here on Thursday for another episode of the Murami Podcast. Enjoy your Tuesday and your Wednesday. Sorry for ranting and raving today, but I had to get things off my chest. As normal, because you know me, guys, I use this as therapy as well, which is great. And I hope you've stuck with me this long. I do appreciate it. So until Thursday, I will see you back here for another episode of the Moor Army Podcast. Unleashed, by the way. Unleashed. Yes, that's right. Unleashed. We'll see you back here on Thursday for another edition of the Moor Army Podcast. Thanks for listening, guys. <laughs>